Um, oh yeah, that's a great picture. <laughs> Hi, Luke here with CatsAndCarp.com and I want to show you the worm taser. Now this little contraption is an electrical worm getter. It drives the worms right out of the soil. It's pretty cheap to make and it will get you a lot of worms rather quickly. But keep in mind that you're working with 120 volt electricity here, so use some common sense. First off, keep in mind that I am not an electrician. I'm just some guy off the internet. For all you know, I electrocuted myself with this thing a month ago and the video is all that's left of me. Second of all, don't handle the electrodes when this thing is plugged in. Okay, Get it all set up the way you want it, get everybody clear, then plug it in. And when you want to mess with it, unplug it first. Okay, And of course, don't let kids or pets run around when you're using this thing. You don't want anyone to get hurt. So use your own common sense, your own judgment, uh, and, uh, be, uh, because you can't count on mine. All right, so the way the worm taser works is you've got a 120 volt male uh, outlet right here, a plug that you can plug into a wall socket or extension cord, and then you have a series of probes that you shove into the ground, okay? And it works like this. You go shove this thing in the ground like so. And you space them about two feet apart. You turn on the juice and worms within about a two foot radius of the probes come wiggling up out of the ground. Okay, you can catch a lot of worms this way. All right, so this is what I used to build the electric worm taser. First, I got some screwdrivers, some really long ones. I paid about a dollar for these off of Amazon.com. And then I got some 10 gauge electrical wire, about 25 feet of it. And uh, I also got these uh, splice clips, really helpful. And I got uh, a plug from Home Depot, just a 120 volt plug. I had some shrink tubing sitting around the house and used a barbecue lighter or a heat gun with the shrink tubing, uh, pliers, measuring tape, some channel locks also are helpful, a uh, screwdriver for the plug, electrical tape, uh, uh, wire strippers of course, and some half inch cable conduit is also useful. So then what I did is cut off 18 inch sections of 10 gauge wire one section for each probe I wanted to use. I connected the 18 inch sections of wire to the main line uh, with these splice locks. Every two feet, I put in a splice lock. These splice locks are really great. I use them all the time. You just attach the two wires inside the splice lock. Then you take the pliers and you depress the metal tab and that penetrates the insulation on both wires. And then you flip over the little plastic cover and pinch it shut until it clicks Then you're done. Channel locks work really great for doing that as well, though you can use needle nose pliers in a pinch. But at any rate, this is what it should look like. You've got your 10 gauge wire, and after I was done, I had 18 inches um, of wire hanging off at each spot where I wanted to attach the probes. On the end, I attached the 120 volt male adapter I bought at Home Depot. It was really simple. I just attached it to the positive prong on the plug. However, I ended up switching this back and forth because it turns out a lot of the plugs, uh, the which prong is positive is not consistent. So you kind of had to test the outlet, find out which prong was positive and switch the wire over to wherever that was. Then what I would uh, do is strip off a fair amount of wiring off the 18 inch section that was going to be attached to the screwdriver. I'd, expose enough wire that I could electric, use electrical tape to attach it to the shank of the screwdriver and just kind of keep it in place. I wasn't really doing much with it other than holding it to the shaft. Then I slid on a piece of three quarter inch shrink tubing followed by a piece of half inch shrink tubing and heated them both up with the uh, heat gun or the barbecue lighter, shrunk them down and then I covered the whole thing with the half inch uh, electrical conduit uh, just to kind of make it look a little bit prettier taped it up and then that's what we had we got it all done 
Other than the fact that this can kill you, the biggest downside is that it only works with non-GFI outlets. Unfortunately, almost all modern outlets are either GFI outlets or they're connected to a GFI outlet. And if you plug one of these things into a GFI outlet, it uh, trips the switch and the outlet stops working. Additionally, you have to make sure that the cable is hooked up to the right prong, uh, the positive prong on your outlet, and it switches from outlet to outlet, from house to house. So you have to test it with a multimeter to make sure that you have the right prong hooked up for your outlet. And so you have to test the outlet with the multimeter. You go ahead and you put the black multimeter prong in the ground and then you put the red multimeter in the prong and you'll get a reading whenever you find whichever is the positive prong. So I ended up having to do this a lot and I ended up having to switch uh, the prongs a whole bunch. I had to do this like three or four different times. It was a real pain in the butt. Additionally, it was really difficult to find non-GFI outlets. I ended up running extension cords through my living room to try to find an outlet that wasn't connected to a GFI switch. Um, this was true in a lot of houses, and the newer the house, the harder it is to find. But once I got it sorted out, and after many misstarts and blown uh, breakers, uh, we went and tested it, and we actually got it to work. Bingo, it's working. We're now working, we're not shorted out. Oh, look at that, look right there. Oh yeah, look at that, right away. Yeah. Look at there's the little ones right there. Yep. What? I'll get the bucket. Cyrus, it's working. But you gotta stay and watch Tommy. I know, I'm seeing what I can keep in here. How many of them have you got? Two so far. Yes. Two little ones. Yes. So all up along the line, we should find them? Yeah. The grass is so thick, we're gonna have to roll oh, there's, it. Look at this, that's a nice one. Wow, there you go. There you go, throw that bad boy in the bucket. All right. It's hard, I mean, even if they're coming out, it's hard to see them. I mean, they gotta really come out and work. But it's definitely causing activity. There's all kinds of uh, movement in the grass. Look at that. Two of them. Or that's just one big guy. Rush day, it's working. This thing is popping up worms like mad. Really? We, we pulled out like eight so far. Are you shocking them and they're dead? No, no, no. no. That just makes them come up. There was one right here and he was out and I grabbed him and missed him and he went back down and he hasn't come up. So maybe they, they figured out they're being fooled. Yeah. Start pawing the ground. And it can't be like hurting him too bad because you know if it was really hurting him I think he'd just come out anyways and he wouldn't he wouldn't go back down but this one feet this yeah. way. Or no, not just like a foot and a half. Just take it like that. And bury that second. Walk the line back. As deep as I can, or just a little bit? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a clue. I'm experimenting. I learned a lot of things from this project. Uh, first off, I learned that this technique is only as good as the location. Location is really, really important. Additionally, I learned that this device doesn't force the worms to come out of the ground. If the worms see you coming, if you try to grab them, they would go back into the ground and they wouldn't come out. So you had to be a little bit stealthy to get the worms to come out. And the stealthy, more stealthy that you were, the more worms that would come out. And having a lot of people running around and stomping around and getting all excited really seemed to be anti-productive. Um, additionally, it was really obvious that this is a limited technique. You have to have access to a non-GFI outlet that's close to a place it's good to catch worms. And it tends to need to be some place that's wide open and has you know grass or vegetation, but not so much that you can still see the ground, you can still see worms coming out of the ground. Because if the, the grass was too thick, you'd have a harder time seeing the worms. 
But on top of that, the thing that I really learned is how dangerous this is. Um, when I first posted this video, I got a lot of comments and I found out a lot of history about this thing. A lot of people died making this thing. So it's a really dangerous way to get worms and it's not really worth killing yourself over. But we caught a lot of worms. We had a lot of fun doing it. And uh, we took those worms fishing and had a great time. So definitely electricity can get a lot of worms out of the ground. But there's, uh, there's some drawbacks. At any rate, if you like these videos, check out some of our other videos, including how to get worms using dish soap and the six best ways to keep chicken liver on the hook. If you like the videos, don't forget to hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.